What should you do? What are the positive values you should pursue? And as I said, the first value you should pursue is reason. It's clean up your mind. Get your thinking straight. Make sure you're practicing logic, you know how to do it, and you do it consistently. Self-correct, admit when you make mistakes, admit to the errors you make, and constantly be on a path of self-improvement. So the first thing you do is study, learn, digest, integrate. So you become the best thinker you can be. Somebody asked what I mean by integrate. Find connections. See how things are related to one another. How does politics relate to sex? That's one that I think Ayn Rand answered, right? And it's in Atlas Shrugged. The relation between politics and sex is in Atlas Shrugged. And it's definitely, it's in one of, one of uh, um, Francisco's speeches in Atlas Shrugged. What is the relationship between different aspects of, I don't know, different things that you're working on? What is the relationship between, you know, I, 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 I do politics and I do economics, right? Finding relationships between things that are going on in the world. Oh, that's altruism. Oh, and I see altruism there. They, they, they're connected. Maybe they're causing one another. Maybe there's a, what's the causal relationship? So seeing relationships, connecting things, that's what integration is. Um, all right, I've got one more, one more question before I get to some of my other. So uh, before I get to that, uh, by the way, if you're interested in integration, which I think is the most important thing that you can do with your mind, and, and to train it to see connections, to train it to see relationships between things, things that look different but have common causes or have strong overlap, you got to train your mind to do that. And so I would focus on integration in, in studying epistemology, although, you know, generally logic. Uh, and and um, Lennon Peikoff has some fantastic courses in which he talks about integration. So, so look at Lennon Peikoff's courses about knowledge, about objectivism, about how to integrate. And they're all available on Ayn Rand campus. They're all available on, on the new app, Ayn Rand University app that you can download. And, you know, that is, that, is, uh, that is the way to improve yourself. Study. Study objectivism. Study philosophy. Now, you don't have to be a philosopher. You don't have to study it like a philosopher. But study it to make your own thinking clearer. Study it so you see the world better. So you, again, this is the cleaning up your mind. This is the real cleaning your room. Study objectivism so you understand the world around you better, so you can live in it better. And make the focus of your study not to change the world, not to understand politics, not to figure out Trump, not to elect a better president. Study the objectives philosophy for completely egoistic, selfish reasons. Study it to make you the best person you can be. Your motivation to study objectivism, and that's the philosophy I would study, and unless you're going to be a professional intellectual, I don't think you need to spend a lot of time studying other philosophies. Study objectivism in order to improve your ability to live your life. Make it a selfish, egoistic motivation that should energize you and make you enthusiastic about taking these courses, reading these books. Right. So read Ayn Rand. Read Ayn Rand all the time. Don't stop reading Ayn Rand. Just pick up a book, open it anywhere to an essay and read an essay. Read an essay a week or an essay a day. You'll be better off for it. You'll start integrating her way of thinking about the world, which is so unique, so different than anybody else's. Nobody, nobody, nobody comes close 
to the way she thinks about the world, to insightfulness, to a penetration, to a fundamental philosophical analysis. I mean, you guys, all of us, spend way too much time listening to Jordan Peterson and Zizek and Sam Harris and all of these people when one essay by Ayn Rand is worth a thousand hours of Jordan Peterson. A thousand hours of Jordan Peterson. You can do Jordan Peterson after you read all the Ayn Rand stuff. And, I mean, just try it. Pick up Capitalism Under the Deal, Philosophy Who Needs It, uh, 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 The Virtue of Selfishness, any one of those books. Just open it up to a random essay and just read it. And then another one, a few days later, a week later. And just do that systematically and you will see that your sense of life, your view of the world, your feeling about reality and about yourself will get better. I'm talking about the nonfiction. I'm talking about any of Ayn Rand's nonfiction. Right? Any of them. And it's, it's romantic manifesto. I mean, it'll really substantially improve your life. Yeah. Somebody says Ayn Rand is hyp hypnotic. Like JP, that's right. Ayn Rand's not hypnotic. Ayn Rand requires you to think. She doesn't just entertain you with stories that seem interesting, that you don't quite grasp, that stay in the mist, and in, that, are, that are bleak, that are not quite clear. Ayn Rand is clear. She's not always understandable, because you have to read many of her essays more than once to get what she actually said. But it's right there. And, and it'll change the way you think about the world. It'll change your capacity to be rational. Right. I mean, she is a, a true genius, a true genius, which none of these other people are. I mean, they're smart. I'm not saying they're not smart. But she's a, 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 a life-changing, world-changing, world-changing, once-in-a-millennial genius. And one of the great tragedies of our world is that people don't study her. They're not a, that, that people are enamored by these superficial, you know, uh, churners of pseudoscience and pseudo-philosophy instead of actually engaging in the ideas. I mean, she changed the world. You know. And if, 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 you know, don't, and don't study Ayn Rand for me. Certainly don't study Ayn Rand from, you know, hacks like, like Stephen Marlinu or, or other people, or Jordan Peterson talks about Ayn Rand. I mean, don't take their word for Ayn Rand. Go read it yourself. Go actually engage with the ideas. Engage with what she says. Again, here's the exercise. One essay of Ayn Rand's a week. No, that's not, I mean, even for you guys who don't read much, I'm just making an assumption. For, for, for the world in which we live in, where people don't read much, one essay a week is not that much. You can do it. Right? You, you mentioned in your book, the latest one, on the, the philosophy for the new intellectual, that in our founding fathers, talked about the right of the pursuit of happiness. Uh, do you think this is really I important? I don't know what else could be any more important if you uh, attach exact meaning to concepts. The pursuit of happiness means a man's right to set his own goals, to choose his values, and to achieve them. Happiness means that state of consciousness which comes from the achievement of your values. Uh, now, what can be more important than happiness? Uh, but happiness does not mean simply momentary pleasures or any kind of mindless self-indulgence. Happiness means a profound, guiltless, rational, feeling of self-esteem and of pride in one's own achievement. It means the enjoyment of life, which is possible only to a rational man on a rational code of morality. What that code is, I couldn't possibly tell you in a brief interview, but those who are interested will find it in my books, particularly in Atlas Shad. Do you think it's important then that we be guiltless in our feelings about this? I wouldn't even know how to answer such thing as, is it important to be guiltless? Right. Um, to put it in my terms, I would say it is important to be moral. Right. Well, I would stress the positive, not the negative. 